The see the problem is like with with all this the living by principles, living a principled life, focusing on relationships, and kind of thinking of this life as this perfect thing kind of forgets the notion that none of it, you know, makes any sense, right? Like the like it it, it kind of implies that this is like a video game and you want to get a high score as opposed to none of this even makes sense. Like, why would he, like, what that, <laughs> like, like, what does it even mean to die? It's going to be over. It's like everything I do, all these productivity hacks, all this life, all these efforts, all these creative efforts kind of assume it's going to go on forever. There's a kind of uh, sense of immortality. And I don't even know how it intellectually makes sense that it ends. Uh, of course, got to ask you in that context, what do you think is the meaning of it all? Especially for computer scientists. I mean, yeah. there's got to be some mathematical. Uh, yeah, 27 or what's the, what's <laughs> the uh, Douglas a Adams? Number. Yeah, or 42. 40, 42, okay. 20, 27 is a better number. I should, I should read more sci-fi. Um, well, maybe I, you're onto something with a 27. People I don't should want to give away that. too much, but just <laughs> trust me, 27. It's divisible, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, obviously, right? I mean, I'm a, I hoping you would. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But but going back to what you were saying about the sort of the existentialist or the, sort of the more nihilist style approach, the one thing that, that there is are intimations, right? So that there's these intimations that human has of somehow this feels right and this feels wrong. This feels good. This feels like I'm doing, I mean, aligned with something, you know, when I'm acting with courage to save whatever, right? It's not... These intimations are a grounding against arbitrariness. Like one of the ideas I'm really interested in is that uh, when you look at religion, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in world religions. For, for my, my grandfather was a, uh, like a theologian that studied and wrote all these books. And I'm very interested in this type of stuff. And there's this great book that's it's, it's not um, specific to a particular religion, but it's Karen Armstrong wrote this great book called The Case for God. She's very interesting. She was a, a Catholic nun who sort of left that religion and is, but one of the smartest thinkers uh, in terms of like accessible theological thinking that's not tied to any particular religion. Her whole argument is that the way to understand religion, you, you first of all, you have to go way back pre Enlightenment where all this was formed. We got messed up thinking about religion post Enlightenment, right? And, and um, these were operating systems for making sense of intimations. The, the one thing we had were these different intimations of this feel like awe and mystical experience. And this feels some, there's something you feel when you act in a certain way and, and don't act in this other way. And it was like the scientists who were trying to study and understand the model of the atom by just looking at experiments and trying to understand what's going on. Like the, the great religions of the world were basically figuring out how do we make sense of these intimations and live in alignment with them and build a life of meaning around that? What were the tools they were using? They were using ritual. They were using belief. They were using action. But all of it was like an OS. It was like a, a liturgical model of the atom that that that. It's hard coded uh, in, so it's it did it, uh, through, through the evolutionary process. Some, I mean, they wouldn't. Have, but, the I mean, they wouldn't have called it that back then. Or yeah, I mean, whether they said who they didn't have that as pre enlightenment. They, they just said this is here and mm -hmm. and. The directive is to to try to live in alignment with that. Well, then I want to ask who wrote the original code. Yeah, that's, so, that's so, the open question. Yeah, so so Armstrong lays out this good argument, and and where it gets really interesting is that that she emphasizes that all of this was considered ineffable, right? So the the whole notion, and this is like rich in Jewish tradition in particular, and also in Islamic tradition, we can't comprehend and understand what's going on here. Right. And so the best we can do to approximate understanding and live in alignment is we like act as if this is true, do these rituals, have these actions or whatever. Post enlightenment, a lot of that got, once we learned about enlightenment, mm -hmm. we grew these suspicions around religion that are very much of the modern era. Right. So, like to, to Karen Armstrong, like uh, Sam Harris's critique of religion makes no sense. Right. The, the, the critique's based on, well, this is you're making the assent to propositions that you think are true for which you do not have evidence that they are true. She's like, that's an enlightenment thing, right? Like, this is not the context. And this would not, the religion is the Rutherford model of the atom. Like, it's not actually maybe what is underneath happening, but this model explains why your chemical equations work. And so this is like the way religion was. You, you, there's a God, we'll call it this. This is how it works. We do this ritual, we act in this way. It aligns with it, just like the model of the atom predicted why, you know, NA and CL is going to become salt. This predicts that you're going to feel and live in alignment, right? It's like this beautiful, sophisticated theory, which actually matches how a lot of great theologians have, have you know, thought about it. 
Um, but then when you come forward in time, yeah, maybe it's evolution. I mean, I, this is like what Peterson hints at, right? Like mm-hmm. he's basically, he's not, he, he doesn't like to get super pinned down on this, but I'm a, it kind of seems where he yeah, sees he's, it that he's way. He's almost like searching for the words. He focuses more on like Jung and other people, but uh, I mean, I know he's very Jungian, but but that same type of analysis, I think, roughly speaking, like Armstrong is sort of a, it's kind of like a Petersonian analysis, but she's looking more at the deep history of religion than, uh, but yeah, he throws in an evolutionary. Yeah. Aspect, and I wonder which, what uh, home it finds. I, I wonder what the new home is if religion dissipates, uh, what the new home for these kinds of natural inclinations are. Uh yeah. Well, there's and, technology, well, there... And if it's evolution, I mean, this is Francis Collins's book also. He's like, well, that's a religious... That could be a very religious notion. I don't... I think this stuff is interesting. I'm not a very religious person, but I'm uh, I'm thinking it's not a bad idea. I mean, maybe, maybe <laughs> what replaces... Honestly, like, maybe what replaces religion is a return to religion, but in this sort of more sophisticated... I mean, if you went back... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the issue with, like, a lot of the, the, the recent critiques, I think, is it's a... Uh, it's a straw man critique in a complicated way, right? Because the, the the whole way these the way this works. I mean, the theologians. If you're reading Paul Tillich, if you're reading Heschel, if you're reading these people, they're they're thinking very sophisticatedly about religion in terms of this. It's ineffable, and we're just these things, and is is this deep it connects us to these things in a way that puts life in alignment. We can't really explain what's going on because we're, we our brains can't handle it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for the average person, though, this notion of live as if is kind of how religions work. Is live live as if this is true. It's like an an OS for getting in alignment with mm-hmm. because we, we through ev- cultural evolution, like you behave in this way, do these rituals. Live as if this is true um, gives you the what the goal you're looking for. But that's a complicated thing. Live as if this is true because if you, especially if you're not a theologian, to say uh, yeah, I, this is not true in an alignment sense. But I'm living as if it kind of takes the heat out of it. But of course, it's what people are doing because, you know, highly religious people still do bad things where if you really were, you know, there's absolutely a hell and I'm definitely going to go to it if I mm-hmm. do this bad thing. You would never have, you know, no one would ever murder anyone if they were an uh, evangelical Christian, right? So so it's like what, uh, this is kind of a tangent that I'm, I'm, I'm on shaky ground here, but it's something I've been interested off and on a lot. Well, it's, it's fast. I mean, I think we're in some sense searching for because it is, it does make for a good operating system. We're searching for a good live as if X is true, and we're searching for a new X. Yeah, and maybe artificial intelligence will be the very, the new gods that we're so desperately looking yeah. for. Yeah, or it'll just spit out forty-two. <laughs> I thought it was twenty-seven. Uh, yeah, this is uh, as you know. I've been a huge fan. Uh, so are a huge number of people that uh, I've spoken with. So they could telling me I absolutely have to talk to you. This was a huge honor. This was really fun. Thanks for wasting all this time with me. Yeah, no, likewise, man. I've been a longtime fan, so this was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, man.